ever caught yourself making a judgment or assumption about someone else without even knowing them? For a variety of reasons, I bet you have. I can admit with absolute certainty that I am a judgmental person. We all are. The truth is, as human beings, we are socially predisposed to judgment. The importance of analyzing our judgment and its origin lies in the ability to actively prevent discrimination and the spread of hate among and within the different groups in our society. In order to front face an issue, we need to better understand exactly what it is <clears throat> and where it comes from. Visualize it. So, what is prejudgment? Are we born with it or is it learned? Is it possible to completely get rid of it? And what can I do so my prejudgment does not turn into a tolerant and hateful behavior? Let's start off with the etymology and correct definition of the word prejudgment. According to the online etymology dictionary, prejudge comes from the Latin word prejudicare, which directly translates to to judge beforehand. Therefore, the definition of prejudge is to judge something or someone before knowing it or knowing them. A predetermined opinion with no actual reason and also one that is not based on experience. Now, there is a big difference between judgment and discrimination since judgment may include the affective and cognitive components of an attitude, while discrimination acts mostly on the behavioral components. Let me explain. The structure of a person's attitude can be divided into three components, affective, behavioral, and cognitive. Think of the ABCs for short. The affective component relates to a person's feelings and emotions. The behavioral component relates to how a person's attitude towards a subject can influence the way they act and proceed. So, our actions. Lastly, the cognitive component relates to a person's beliefs and knowledge. While judgment is the thought, the opinion, and or the misconception of a certain group of people, it does not imply bigotry or direct hateful actions. Discrimination, on the other hand, takes it one step further by being the active, unjust treatment of a certain group of people. As social psychologist Professor Susan Fisk said, it is not illegal to have a bad thought or feeling in your head. What really matters is the behavior. Still, there is a very thin line between judgment and discrimination, and to prevent the former from turning into the latter, the first step is to honestly and respectfully admit your prejudgment. To break it down and analyze it until realizing that it is nothing more than a potentially damaging thought based on a previously said judgment. As for the question, where does this judgment come from? Psychologist Gordon Alford explains how from the moment we are born, and in order to better develop, we categorize subjects as an organizational method. It is a way of better understanding our surroundings and simplifying complex scenarios. However, the side effect of this mechanism is that it may lead to judgment and wrongful stereotyping. This process of mentally sorting information combined with a person's cultural, social, economic, and political context inevitably lead to prejudgment that develops and is stimulated by input from peers. It'll be there most of the time if we don't make ourselves conscious about it. This may lead to the front. Judgment is something that affects everyone. Sometimes we can be the most judgmental with ourselves, and that is equally as harmful as being it with someone else. Let me tell you something about me. I love to sing. It is one of my favorite things in the world, but I have never been able to freely do it in public. Every time that I might have to perform in front of a group of people, big or small, I would get so anxious. So much that I developed the bad habit of scratching a part of my neck until I left it red and swollen for a, for a day or two afterwards. This was not okay. I'm currently working on it, but the bottom line here is I discovered I was judging myself too harshly. I was setting such unrealistic expectations for myself and for my performance even before I got the chance to do it. I would assume the absolute worst of myself and of the audience's reaction to me, which made me really anxious. I was judging beforehand, prejudging. I am slowly learning that my previous conduct was like a wall, preventing me from peacefully connecting and in a way coexisting with a part of myself. This works the same way for others. Prejudgment is like a barrier that separates us from one another based on irrational misconceptions. But don't worry, we can break these barriers one by one together. This may lead to the prompt. How can I take the first step and work on identifying my prejudgment? 
Well, Project Implicit is a great start. It is a nonprofit organization and international collaboration between researchers that was founded in 1998. Among other services, they created a set of tests called the Implicit Association Test, or IAT for short. These tests assess the conceived link between certain groups of people and certain behaviors or lifestyles by collecting virtual data. These assess the conceived link referring to gender, sexuality, rage, race, nationality, usage of weapons, and many, many others. This test is available online as IAT at implicit.harvard.edu and it educates the public about bias and stereotyping based on judgment. It is a great tool that we can all use to have a general idea of how much our prejudgment affects our view of other people and ourselves. It is perfectly understandable if it is hard to accept our personal biases. It is something that many people go through, but it is also necessary. The whole point of this talk is to help you work through it. So, always remember, prejudgment is something that affects everyone. Something inherent to human beings. The most important thing you can do is to kindly give yourself the space for introspection. Look inside yourself and freely recognize your prejudgments. You have the free will, and you have the power to change certain thought processes from the root, so take advantage of it. No matter how comfortable it may be to keep relying on your prejudgment to assign labels and make unfounded judgments about other people, you will never find growth in this comfort. Together, we can end the infectious spread of hate and intolerance. In the end, all you gotta do is allow yourself to grow and contribute to paving the way towards a world where equity is the norm and not the exception.